Excuse me, little dog. Hi, right, guys. Yeah, this is one of those days today where it's like one minute it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day in the end times. Five minutes later, it is a nasty, yuck, depressing, gray, rainy day. Uh, but anyway, it is a Sunday morning. We have washed into Sunday morning, October 15th, 2023. So after careful consideration, I have decided I can finally... Uh, pull the, well not pull the plug, I guess pull the trigger on uh, this rant that I actually did several weeks ago, but for various reasons I uh, did not publish it, and I'm just going to start fresh from the beginning, and uh, so anyway guys, this is the, the video that I know dozens, if not hundreds of people, although I no longer have hundreds of people listening to any word I say about anything, uh, that it, this is the rant that I know a lot of you have been eagerly anticipating, and that is the old covid himself, Hambone Little Tail, has finally finally gotten corona panic. It has happened. How many years have I been uh, waiting to uh, get corona panic to test my, uh, you know, my uh, opinion of corona panic that this is a bad hair day. So anyway, I have now had corona panic. I'm assuming for the first time. I am assuming this is the first time I got Corona Panic. So is it time for the old covid Sam Mitchell, the, the radical anti-masker, Hambone Little Tail, uh, and not the radical anti-vaxxer, just somebody who has never seen one iota of evidence that it is in my best interest to get a corona panic vaccine or to wear a mask. This is the reason I uh, I don't wear a mask or an, and I've never been vaccinated. I have never seen one iota of evidence uh, <laughs> that I need to. So I'm not going to do something I don't need to do. Uh, that simple, guys. Alright, so I have been there. Drum roll. Am I ready to eat some crow? Uh, now that I have actually had Corona Panic. And guys, if you were watching uh, the videos I was making, I don't know, what has it been? Three, maybe three weeks, three or four weeks ago, I don't know. Uh, in there, you have seen somebody with Corona Panic throughout for, I guess, the two days, maybe three days, I felt a little bit washed out. Now, of course, when, when, I, when I got Corona Panic, uh, or when I tested positive for Corona Panic, I was dealing with this serious ear infection. Uh, you guys might recall that I was fighting this awful ear infection. So, whatever effects I was feeling f from Corona Panic are, are impossible to disentangle from the effects that my body was uh, feeling from the ear infection. But all I can say, I guess, is if I had to choose between Corona Panic over a fucking ear infection or over getting a fucking tooth yanked out of my mouth 
I will take five Corona Panics over one ear infection or one tooth. Now, now that I have been there, uh, more than ever, more than ever, uh, I see zero evidence. Less evidence, I guess, I did not think it was possible for me to see less evidence uh, why I should wear a mask or sure as shit get a fucking vaccine after having this. And <clears throat> I probably never would have known uh, I, I had this, uh, I had corona panic. Never would have known it if it had not been for a friend of mine uh, who got corona panic and I spent the day with this person and uh, several days later they tested positive for corona panic and since we had spent the day together a few days ago, a few days before, they called me just to let me know uh, saying you should get yourself checked to see if you have corona panic. So I never would have even gotten tested to see if I had corona panic uh, if I had not gotten this call from a friend who had tested positive uh, and did get sick from it. Uh, I, I, I never would have tested. Uh, I never would have known I had it, which of course brings up the question, it, 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 is this even the first time I had it? Now, of course, uh, a lot of people, are, are particularly people, I guess, who did get sick from Corona Panic or are claiming, you know, the, the, the same people who are always pushing these goddamn tests, uh, you know, are, are suddenly saying I got a false positive on, on the test. All I know is I've taken about 10 of these goddamn tests uh, over the past three years. I have never tested positive till about three weeks ago. Uh, and when I tested positive, which was on a Saturday, uh, I was already, quote, coming out of whatever the symptoms may have been uh, that, that, I w that I was even showing, the, the, these uh, very minor a uh, little, very minor, little bad hair day, less than a bad hair day uh, inconvenience to my life, which very well might have been caused uh, by the ear infection anyway. Uh, so I remember, so I, I took the test on Saturday is when I tested positive, but I remember <clears throat> it was Thursday, it was two days before the test, that uh, on a Thursday, I was feeling, is all I can describe it, I, I was just kind of washed out. You know, kind of running on, uh, I, I don't know, six cylinders instead of eight cylinders. I was a little bit washed out. My energy level was a little bit down, a little bit lightheaded thought I might uh, be running a, a fever, but I was going right on about my business. It sure as shit was not keeping me uh, in, in bed. I, I was going right on uh, about leading my life. So I felt a little bit washed out. But anyway, it just happened to be the day I was going to the uh, clinic about this ear. Uh, so I, it, it was, I'd been in there a week earlier, so this was my second visit to the clinic. So the nurse was asking me, you know, when I got, before I saw the doctor, you know, how are you feeling, blah, blah, blah. And I mentioned, I said, well, I have to admit that I'm, you know, that I'm kind of washed out and, and, and kind of lightheaded. And I think that I might have a fever. And so the nurse, 
of course, who was wearing a mask, although the doctor was not wearing a mask. Uh, so she takes my temperature. <clears throat> um, when I, the day I was, quote, the sickest, she takes my, I have no fever at all. And uh, she said, you, you have no fever whatsoever. Uh, she goes, it's not unusual for somebody suffering from a severe uh, ear infection to, to, you know, to feel lightheaded. Uh, so I don't know to this day uh, whether I had any symptoms at all. The only other thing that I can recall is I had a, a like an unquenchable thirst for a couple of days, no matter how much fucking water I drank. Uh, it, it was like I was sucking on a hot tailpipe. Uh, so I did drink a lot of water in those couple, which was probably a good thing for me. I should drink more water anyway. And uh, so by the time I took the test on Saturday, uh, would be like day three, and I was already, you know, up and running. Uh, with, with no other symptoms, you know, other than this damn uh, ear infection, which I have managed to get fixed, by the way, guys. And uh, so anyway, uh, there you go. Uh, your old covid -iot has finally had a uh, corona panic and it was less than a bad hair day. Uh, it was not even a little flu. It, 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 it was not a cold. Uh, I don't think I ever sneezed. I, uh, I, I had no problems with my sense of smell, my sense of taste. I had no digestive issues whatsoever. Uh, and, and, and there you go. So that is part one of the story, but I want to talk uh, uh, about a couple of other things. First, we're going to talk about when I was at the doctor's office, you know, feeling kind of washed out and, and lightheaded. In the lobby of the Ithaca Free Clinic, they had this poster of uh, 25 of these, quote, pre-existing conditions. You know, are you at risk for getting a bad case of corona panic? And so what they said is they, this is from the CDC, I'm 99% sure. So they had this list of 25 things that if you suffered from any of these 25 things, if any of these 25 things applied to you, uh, you have a better chance of getting a serious uh, reaction to corona panic uh, than if you don't have any of them. Well, so I go down the 25. <clears throat> so number 17 on the list of 25, they mentioned depression, that depressed people are more likely to get uh, a bad case of corona panic. So out of 25, I guess I could say number 17. Now, of course, guys, in this list of 25 pre-existing conditions uh, on this list, it, it, it covered virtually 100% of the human population uh, on this planet and certainly in this country, uh, which I guess they were mainly uh, look, looking at Americans. I don't know. You see what I'm saying? That, that like there is no, uh, there is virtually no human uh, who could, you know, over the age of, I don't know, six, who can look at this list uh, and, and claim that not one of these things applied to them. Well, 24 out of 25 did not apply to me. 
I, I hit number 17 on the list, that depression is a pre-existing condition. And, uh, uh, of course, what I want to talk about is the two, is the two top ones. Uh, the big two. The number one on the list is how old are you? And it was saying if you are over 65, if you are over 65, you have a better average, a better than average chance of getting a, a bad uh, case of corona panic. Now, I, I wasn't sure over 65, literally, that is saying 66. Uh, I, I've read these old person statistics. I would, uh, if you want to believe any of this data, uh, I would probably put it more at like 72. But uh, anyway, so I am 64 years old, so I squeaked by that when I just turned 64. So I guess for the next one to two years, that one doesn't apply to me. So uh, how many, oh I do remember, how many people uh, in the United States are 65 or older? That would be 16.8% of Americans are older than I am, 65 or over. So we'll call it 17%. So the number one thing to look at is how old you are. And if you are one of the 83% of Americans under the age of 65, and of course that figure would get bigger under the age of 66, and would get even bigger uh, under the age of 72, there is no reason that I can see uh, that you have any reason to be concerned about getting this. <clears throat> and of course, the close second, and I would have put it number one, but number two is how fucking fat you are. There is not a goddamn thing you can do about how old you are, but there sure is shit is something you can do about that big fat fucking belly hanging off of you where you haven't seen your own fucking dick in the last 20 years. The number two, how fucking fat are you? And their definition of that is, do you have a BMI of greater than 25? If you have a body mass index of greater than 25, you are more likely to get corona panic than somebody with, with a BMI of less than 25. Obviously, the implication being that someone with a BMI of 30 is more likely to get a worse case than someone with 25. Someone with a BMI of 40 is more likely than, than, than 30. So, uh, I did have to go do some interesting research on that. So, by the way, my BMI is 23. I am a 64-year-old man with a BMI of 23, which is probably, I guess, when I was 23, I probably had a BMI of about 21. Um... Okay, so let's look at this. 30.7% of American adults are considered overweight with a BMI, this is overweight, uh, is defined as a BMI of 25 to 29.9. We'll call it 30.7 percent. Call it 31 percent of Americans uh, are are overweight between uh, 25 and 30, and then 
between 30 and 40, 42.4% of Americans, adults, uh, they, they don't even look at all these fat fucking kids coming up today. That's a whole nother rant. 42.4% of Americans have a BMI between 30 and 40. That is considered being obese. 42.4% of Americans are classified as obese. Uh, and then 9 0.2% have a BMI of greater than 40, uh, which is considered severely obese. So if you add up 9.2, 42.4, that is 51.6 plus 30.7. 51, that is 81, 82.3% of American adults have a BMI of over 25. So less than 18% of American adults described as people over the age of 20 have a BMI of less than uh, a BMI uh, of less than 25, I would like to find, uh, I just, I haven't dug deep enough to find out what percentage of Americans in their 60s uh, have uh, a, a BMI less than 25. My guess, I'm taking a wild guess, so you, you guys can look it up, is probably less than 5% of my fellow 60-somethings have a BMI of less than 25. Okay, and uh, let's see, I can't remember that those were the two big ones. How old are you? How fucking fat are you? Uh, as they say, not a goddamn thing you can do about the first one. There is a hell of a lot you can do uh, uh, about the second one. And that's to lay off the fucking donuts and, and the fucking soft drinks and the potato chips and the ice cream and, and, and all the rest of it. And then somewhere, and then of course they had asthma, I guess you can't help that. They had autoimmune disorders, and somewhere in the top five was smoking. Do you smoke? Uh, I assume they were talking about tobacco. Uh, what percentage of Americans smoke? 11.5%. I'm surprised that the figure is that low. So there is something, let's call it number five on the list, a pre-existing condition. Do you smoke? And uh, with the obvious implication, the more you smoke, the greater your risk. No shit, Sherlock. I don't mind saying I have never smoked a tobacco cigarette one time since the day I was born. I've never done it. I have never smoked a tobacco cigarette. I smoke probably in an average year, and I'm sure some of you guys will laugh hysterically. My guess is since January 1st, if I have taken 12 hits of marijuana, I, I would be surprised. Uh, I smoke at most one-eighth of one ounce of weed in a year. Okay, and then, uh, then they had the other 20. 
uh, that got more and more ridiculous as, as they went down the list. I don't know where the list went after depression. You can, I'm sure you can find the CDC list of conditions. Anyway, you can look this up and see how many of these apply to you. But, uh, you know, I read over this list, and uh, except for the possible connection to number 17, uh, I was saying, okay, I see more evidence that I do not need to get a fucking vaccine and, and, and wear a mask and hide from people and all of this than ever. Thank you, CDC, for explaining to me that this is a fucking disease that affects old, fat, sick people, probably, who smoke. And my guess is the fatter you are is more important than, uh, than uh, how old you are. That I think... A, 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 like my 81-year-old friend, uh, my radical anti-vaxxer, anti-masker friend, who has a BMI of about 19, who has a healthy diet and gets plenty of exercise, that she, she's never gotten corona panic, never been vaccinated, never worn a mask, the reason she has never gotten it has more to do with how slim she is than how old she is. Uh, and what was interesting in this 25, unless I just missed it, I, I don't remember reading anywhere on the list of 25 uh, things, how much exercise do you get? As far as I can recall, you know, they, they talk about how fucking fat you are, uh, which certainly implies how much you eat. Uh, and they talk about smoking, and there might have been a couple of other lifestyle things, but I do not recall one mention of how much exercise do you get. I do not remember anywhere on the list seeing how much fresh air do you get, how much time do you spend outside on screened porches, or when you are inside, what percentage of the time do you have your windows open with fresh air circulating throughout the room while you sleep at night? No mention of how much fucking exercise you get. No mention of how much fucking fresh air you get. No mention of how much time you spend outside. And not one word uh, about how much uh, sunshine you get uh, in your life. Can you say vitamin D? Vitamin D. Uh, no mention on that list of 25 things about how much sunshine you get. And, and uh, you know, so I'm thinking, uh, I, you know, when I tested positive, uh, I immediately started. And, 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 and what was, well, not great about this, but it's unbelievable how many of my friends, I mean, I mean literally people in my own life, I knew that I either had it when I had it or recently had it. My sister had it. Her husband had it. Good God, how many people that I know uh, had had it. And I could not help going down the list of people that I knew and uh, comparing how sick I was and thinking about, well, what is the difference between me and, 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 and uh, we're going to call it, good God, at least 10 other people uh, on this list. I, I am going down the list. Okay, uh, let's call it 10 people. Out of the 10 people, 
I was the least sick of all. Okay, and and and, and the and this list of ten people ran the gamut with me at the bottom. Uh, you know, probably. Uh, well, not probably. I never would have known I even had it if I had not gotten tested. So I was the least sick that I know of. Now, there was one of my friends, uh, almost 80 years old, almost 80 years old, who did not get very sick. They chose to take ivermectin. No more, no comment. I am not going to weigh in uh, on the ivermectin debate. Uh, that person seems to believe that one of the reasons they did not get very sick was because of ivermectin. I am not endorsing or unendorsing uh, that. Uh, I know some of my the people I know were treating themselves with with drugs after they got it. It was pretty much down the middle uh, about people who were vaccinated or not vaccinated. Uh, I saw absolutely zero correlation between the people uh, who were vaccinated, or just in this little sample uh, of my friends, I could, it, it, as I mentioned before, uh, I have seen every possible combination of vaccination, mask wearing, and how sick the people got. Uh, but it, it ran the gamut from me uh, not even probably knowing uh, I ever had it if I hadn't gotten tested uh, to a couple of people who got the living shit knocked out of them. Okay, and I, I, I started comparing myself to them. So other than that one outlier who was over 65, all of us, no, I'm sorry, my sister is 72. My sister is 72. She is vaccinated to the hilt. She is a mask Nazi vaccinated to the hilt. Uh, she is 72 years old and she said she was she is for about three days that she felt, you know, kind of like she had a bad cold. Her husband, who is my age and, uh, and probably has my same BMI because we, I wear all of his cast-off clothing, uh, fully vaccinated, uh, uh, he was in bed sick for over a week. Uh, but, but it ran the gamut I would say it, it was pretty much a bell curve where most of the people would fall somewhere in the middle of the bell curve that they were maybe a couple of days in bed. The, uh, it lasted seven to ten days with varying degrees uh, while I went right on about my life. And uh, so this got uh, me to thinking about all of this shit, which I immediately heard. And anybody who has, A, never gotten this, or they have gotten it and they haven't gotten sick, you hear this shit, you are so lucky. You are so lucky that you have never gotten corona panic or, or haven't gotten sick. Uh, by this, and, 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 I, and I'm just getting sick and tired of hearing this bullshit. So guys, I have no idea what, what I am getting ready to say. Uh, it could be uh, measured in a lab. This is all I want to say about how fucking lucky I am 
not to get sick, uh, someone never vaccinated, never wore a mask, uh, would not have even known they had this. Looking at least comparing to my own group of friends, uh, I get by orders of magnitude. By orders, of, well, first let me start with my BMI of 23. My brother-in-law, his BMI is about equal to mine. The, 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 the person pressing 80, uh, their BMI is about equal to mine. But the, the, I would, I'm guessing 7 out of 10 of these people uh, had a BMI greater than 25. And as we saw in these statistics, 82% of Americans have a BMI greater than 25. I probably had the lowest BMI of anybody and I was the least sick. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but I cannot imagine that it doesn't. So maybe if you're freaking out about getting this, running around, getting jabbed and wearing a mask, and you have a BMI of over 25, you act like you're so fucking concerned about this, can the fucking donuts stop stuffing that fucking food into your face, you clueless fucking moron? Okay? That's number one. Number two, what I was looking at is, in my lifestyle, particularly in the summer here at Bugs in a Jar, I get more physical exercise by orders of magnitude compared uh, to, the, to the other people I know. By orders of magnitude. Uh, and, and, you know, people who know me, uh, they're just like, my God, you're the Energizer the Bunny. Uh, I have been busting my ass up here at Bugs in a Jar Farm uh, for the past, uh, since uh, the spring of 2020, busting my ass. Uh, I get more physical exercise than any 64-year-old man, uh, hands down, uh, that I know. Okay? And going hand-in-hand hand with that, it is exercise outdoors in the fresh air and the sunshine. I get, and then when I come in at night, I leave the windows open. I mean, e even now that it's getting cold, I sleep with the windows open. Uh, I get more fresh air, again, by orders of magnitude than uh, most, of, most of the people on this list. And I'm assuming I get out, out of this, uh, out of this uh, census, of, let's call it 10 people, I get more sunshine shining onto me. I spend more minutes or hours uh, per day in the sun getting bathing in vitamin D than anybody on this list. My guess, not, 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 my guess, and, and, and this is not, but this is just an honest uh, appraisal of myself. My guess is I am in the top 10% of Americans who get the most physical exercise in their day-to-day -day lives. I am in the top 10% of Americans who get the most 
fresh air that uh, I, I would put myself in the top probably 3%. Uh, I spend more time breathing fresh and fresh country air than, uh, than I would say 97% of Americans and I guess not counting uh, teenage lifeguards. Uh, I, I get more sunshine uh, than the vast majority uh, of Americans. So. Am I lucky? Okay, if my BMI was 35 instead of 23, would I have uh, not felt any of this? You know where I'm going with this. If I got uh, the, if I had the BMI of the average American, if I got the amount of physical exercise as the average American, if I got the, uh, the amount of fresh air as the average American, and the amount of sunshine as the average American, would I have uh, gotten more sick uh, th than I did uh, from Corona panic? I guess I am just lucky. I am such a lucky son of a bitch. So I can afford to be an arrogant prick covid uh, I, I, I'm sick and fucking tired uh, 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 of this whole fucking thing. S stop stuffing the fucking donuts in your fucking mouth. Okay? Get out there. Get off your fat fucking ass, get outside, do some fucking work. Get some fucking ac exercise, you lazy fuck. Uh, get some goddamn sunshine and fresh air, and when you go inside, leave the fucking window open and see how your luck improves. You know, these people taking no fucking responsibility uh, for, for their own health. No fucking responsibility. Uh, they they want to go whining. They want to live in fucking fear and terror. Uh, they want to go get shot up uh, by Big Pharma. They want to put this fucking diaper on their face because they don't want to take any fucking responsibility. Uh, 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 about their own fucking health. I have no fucking, uh, no fucking sympathy from, from some fat ass motherfucker, fat, lazy, uh, smoker, whatever, uh, doing nothing to uh, take care of their own health and, 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 and getting sick from corona panic. I don't have any fucking sympathy for you. Anyway, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, is it time for Hambone, the old covid -iot, to eat some crow? Say, Bob, now that you have eaten all that crow, I'm ready to go eat some chicken. I will try to shut up about this. Get out and get some fucking fresh air and sunshine, guys, while you still can. Bye, guys.